starting with the inner circle and solving equations using the inner circle. Well, today, derive and solve equations using the inner circle. So, start out. All right, the inner circle has its center at the origin, zero, zero, and a radius with a length of one unit, okay? That is the inner circle. It's standard. It always has a radius of one. Now, the terminal side of any angle theta in standard position will meet the inner circle at a point with coordinates cosine theta and sine theta. So basically, when you have a point that's located on the inner circle, it's not the point, you know, x, y. It's referred to as the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, they can be uh, one or one half, so on and so forth, okay? But a lot of times when they do reference this, they'll reference, you know, what's the cosine of theta, what's the cosine of a particular angle, which means they're looking for the x coordinates of that angle. Okay, of that point where that angle corresponds to. Or they might say, what is the sign of your angle? That means they're looking for the y coordinate of that point on your inner circle. Okay? And if you think about it, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the so sine of theta is y over 1. So that's why sine is y. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is x over 1. So the cosine of theta is x. That's how that goes about. Don't forget for the trigonometry unit, this identity here that the tangent of theta can be found by basically taking the sine of theta and dividing by cosine of theta instead of doing the opposite over the adjacent. In standard position, standard position again being that the initial side is on your x-axis, your terminal side is the side that moves, the initial side does not move. So in standard position, theta is, a pos is positive if it opens in a counterclockwise direction and negative if it opens in a clockwise direction. So as you see in the diagram here, the initial side is your x-axis, okay? As the angle rotates in a counterclockwise direction to form your, or to meet your terminal side, it forms a positive 135 degree angle. And if it goes in a clockwise direction from your terminal side, or sorry, from your initial side to your terminal side, that creates a negative degree angle. In this case, negative 225 degrees. Do not forget that there are 360 degrees in a circle. Okay? That can definitely help you out. <laughs> well, you have to evaluate different uh, different degree measures or different angle measures. Um, and of course. Uh, where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive and negative within the inner circle. Again, for what we did for your problem of the day, and also for the trig unit, you can use special right triangles to find the exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent for these angles, which we did already. Okay? They play a part within the inner circle. All right? You guys don't really need to get this down. You already have it down in your uh, notebooks. Okay? So, what we're about to do is we're about to derive the unit circle, okay? The unit circle consists of degrees, radians, and ordered pairs, okay? Now, where these degrees, where these angles, where these ordered pairs come from are from those special right triangles, okay? So, that's why I had you guys do that for your problem today. So, we're going to start off with... The first degree measure, which is located right here along your initial side. This degree measure would be what? Not five. You have to start. Put your hands down. Think about it. When you think of a degree of a circle, what's the smallest degree you possibly have? Don't too large. Oh, I got zero. Zero degrees. <laughs> This angle right here is zero degrees. 
That is where your initial side is located. That's the side that never moves. That's where all your angles start from, okay? And then they continue to increase in a counterclockwise fashion to form the rest of your angles. Now, if you think back to your special right triangle, what was the next smallest degree measure? 30. That is this angle here. After that is what? 45, 60, lastly, what? 90 degrees, okay? Those are the degree measures for your first quadrant. Now for your other three quadrants, it continues in that same similar fashion. After 90 comes what? You're increasing. Think about it. If 60 is 30 degrees from 90, we need to continue in that same fashion, so 120. Okay? Think about it. This point, 45, and this point over here correspond. So if 45 degrees is a, if 45 degrees is 45 degrees away from 90, then this point is how many degrees away from 90? No, we're not 45. It's still 45, so it's 45 plus 90. 135. And you continue along with that same process. What's the next angle measure? 150. And then once you've gone half of a circle, what degree measure are you? 180. And you can continue around the same pattern. The next one would be? 210. 225. 240, 270. Keep going. 300, 300, 315, 330. And last but not least, the last angle measure is 360. Yes, it does go all the way around a full 360 degrees. Now, those are your degrees for your unit circle. They also are they also correspond to a radian measure, okay? A radian measure. Now, if you do not know these off the top of your head, you can use the conversion to go from degrees to radians, which is what? Anybody? Pi over it is pi over 180, okay? So the uh, conversion to go from degree to radian, you just multiply each of your degree measures by pi over 180, okay? So, the first one is easy. Zero times pi over 180 is? Zero. So that is zero pi radian. Okay? Continuing up 30 times pi over 180. Pi over six. It's going to be pi over six. Okay? Now, uh, don't do it. Got to go it out. Got to go it out. 45 degrees. Uh, pi over four. It is pi over four. So again, you can just continue to convert all of these degrees to radians. That's what I want you guys to do. Take a minute to do that. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm this ain't being sarcastic. I'm being cool. All right, so here we go. You should have pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six, and then pi. So far so good? Yeah. Cool, then you would have had seven pi over six, And you're multiplying every one of these angle measures by pi over 180. Now that's just the default. You do need to commit these to memory, okay? Because you are timed on this IV exam and you can't recreate the unit circle like the entire, the whole thing, okay? So it's best to commit this to memory. After this comes 5 pi over 4, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2. After that, 5 pi over 7 pi over 4, and 11 pi over 6. Okay? Now, for your degrees that are associated with it, this is where you have the sine of theta, or the sine of 30 degrees, or the cosine of 5 pi over 6, so on and so forth. This is where it, it comes in. This is what you'll need to solve equations. You'll need to know what these ordered pairs are. It's so remember, this is a this is a 30 degree angle right here. 
creates a right triangle. So that means that this angle is going to be 60. You guys remember the makeup of a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle? Just hold it down. Just Throw down on your, uh, your pot. Oh, you should have wrote down your pot notebooks. Sine is uh, root 3 over 2. Uh huh. And, and cosine is? Half. And one half. Because remember, across from the 30 is x. Across from the 60 is x root 3. Across from the 90 is 2x. So yes, the cosine would be this over this. So that would be root 3 over 2. The sine of 30 would be your opposite of your hypotenuse. So x over 2x, which this is down to be 1 half. Okay? For 45 degrees, you have a 45 degree angle here and up here. So that was x, x, and x root 2. What was the sign of 45 degrees? Root 2 over 2. And what was the sign? Root 2 over 2. Now the biggest thing is that students tend to have is that they mix up your sine and cosine. Okay. So be careful. Cosine is x, sine is y. Okay? So they ask you what's the cosine of 30 degrees. You're looking for the x value, the x coordinate of cosine. 30, or the x value is 30 degrees. They ask you for the sine of 45, you're looking for the y value of 45 degrees. Lastly, you have 60. There's your 60 degree angle. 30, and then you just switch it. Across from the 30 is x, across from the 60 is x root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2x. So basically, if you recall from your problem of the day, the sine of 30 degrees was the cosine of 60 degrees. One half. So it would be one half, and then root 3 over 2. Oh, we guys are writing this neatly. Yes? Yes. Okay, so you're going to give me a second. All right. Now, for your quadrantal angles, that would be 0 and 90. Remember, what's the radius of the inner circle? One. One. So that means this point is located one at zero. one zero. Okay? Because that point, again, is on the radius. The radius is one unit long. So the x coordinate is zero. Or the x coordinate is one, the y coordinate is zero. 90 degrees is just the opposite. Zero, one. Now, do you do the, the box thing? So to get the other ordered pairs for the other angles, again, they match up, they correspond to each other. 30 and its counterpart of 150 have the same ordered pair, except 150 degrees is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, the x value is negative. So that means that it is going to still be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half but the x value is going to be negative. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so like to think about it, if you think about the sign, you just go 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, yeah. 3, 2, 1, for your sign. Yeah. That's one way to help you uh, remember it. There's a, few, there's, there's, there's a lot of different techniques to remember your uh, remember the ordered pairs. That was that's one. I'm going to show you another one after I get all of them in. Okay? I'll also show you a way to remember your radians for those who have issues remembering your radian. Okay? Continue to make your box. 150, 30 degrees, make a box with 210. So 210 have the same set of ordered pairs, root 3 over 2 and 1 half. The only thing is that in the third quadrant, both of them are negative. And the last piece to make the box is 
330. So 330 degrees or 11 power 6 have the same ordered pairs as 30 and 150 and 210. Except this time, I'm in the fourth quadrant. So what? The Y is negative and the X is positive. Okay? So go ahead and finish off the rest of the ordered pairs for all the ones that aren't done. equation cosine x equals negative root 2 over 2 and the x is bounded between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi so you need to figure out am I answering this in degrees or radians you're answering this in radians so all your answers should be in radians this one's the easiest this was an easier one okay because if you think about it negative root 2 over 2 is a ordered pair or part of an ordered pair on your unit circle and you're looking for cosine where cosine x equals negative root 2 over 2 so basically you're asking yourself if you are if you were solving for x if this would basically be x equals the cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 so basically you're asking yourself where on your unit circle is cosine 
negative root 2 over 2. Okay? So, uh -huh. you have 3 power of 4 and what? 5 pi over 4. Now, yeah. Now it does. Now this is only those values that are between zero and two pi. Okay, your unit circle only gives you from zero to two pi. Now you would have to manipulate these to figure out. Okay, well what about from negative two pi to zero? Math. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got an opposite way to make the same thing. The first time the negative three pi over four is negative five pi. The first time the negative three pi over four, and then to negative five pi over four. Remember when you are going in the uh, clockwise direction, you create a negative angle. So if you think about your unit circle, you know, 3 power over 4 is here, and 5 power over 4 is here. And you're going in the positive direction, okay? But to get to these angles going in the negative direction, you basically starting at 0, this is negative pi over 2, so then this would have to be negative 3 pi over 4. Continue around in the same fashion. That would be a negative 5 pi over 4. Okay? It's the negative answers are completing for the domain. Okay, so it's asking between negative 2 pi all the way up to 2 pi. So that would include all your positive values and then all your negative values if you were looking at the negative radius. So, not the coordinates, the angles. These are angles. Okay. These are your answers. So, all four of these are your answers. It's not asking for one, it's asking for the solutions in between, that, in between those two values, negative 2 pi all the way up to 2 pi. Okay? So these first two were only from 0 to 2 pi. So you need the value to go from negative 2 pi to 0. Okay? Real quick, just to make sure there's no discrepancy here. Okay? Here in the circle, we know going counterclockwise gives you positive measures. Okay, so going, or sorry, counterclockwise gives you positive measure, so going clockwise would give you negative measure, okay? So if I were going counterclockwise, this would be what value? Negative five, two. It would be negative 90 or negative pi over 2. This value would be what? Negative pi or, or negative 180. This value up here would be what? Negative two seven or and then here would be what? It would be negative three sixty or negative two pi. Okay. Now realize that the order pairs don't change. Okay, they're fixed into their position. Okay, so negative nine degrees has the order pair of what? Zero negative one. Okay? None of these change. Okay? Yes. Let's look at the next one. Solve the equation where tangent x equals the square root of 3. x is bound in between 0 and 360 degrees. So you ask yourself, okay, are my answers going to be in degrees or are they going to be in radians? going to be in degrees. And my domain is from 0 to 360, which is my standard unit circle. So I don't have to worry about going in any negative directions or going bigger than 360, none of that. Okay? So, remember that tangent is what over what? Sine over cosine. So, I need that to equal the square root of 3. So where am I in the circle? Is it that when I divide my sine by my cosine, it's going to give me 
square root of 3. Okay? Think about it. When I divide sine and cosine, I should get the square root of 3. Look at your unit circle. What angle measure, don't say it out loud, but think about it. What angle measure is going to get you the square root of 3? Your sine would have had to have been the square root of 3 over 2, and your cosine would have had to have been 1 half. Because when you divide these fractions, you keep the numerator, change that division to multiplication, and then flip the denominator. And you would see that your 2's would cancel out. So where on my unit circle is sine square root of 3 over 2 and cosine 1 half? 60 degrees. That's one of your answers. There's also another spot where tangent is going to be the square root of 3. It corresponds to the 60. 240. Because at 240 degrees, sine is negative and cosine is also negative. So when you divide two negatives, they make a positive. Questions? Yes? Do we not have to find the negative? Because we're between 0 and 360 degrees. Alright? Once you guys have tried this one, uh, the whiteboards are behind the last person in your row. Go ahead and pass them up. You're going to show your whiteboards. We need to remember that sine is what? Y. Sine is y. So you're trying to figure out where on your unit circle is sine zero. So when you look at your unit circle, sine is zero where? It's at zero, because sine is your y value. Also at 180, 360. But you are also bounded in between negative 360 and zero. So you go the other direction. So, what other values? Negative 180 and negative 360. Okay? So do not forget, it's, the domain is very important. So if you can figure out where they are in your unit circle, that's good. But then do not forget about the other part as well, those negative values, that negative unit. Okay? So your boards. Try this next one. If you need to add this into your notes, that's fine. You can. Just do it on the whiteboard first. This one involves a little bit of work beforehand to solve this. Try this one. <laughs> so for this particular problem, first off, all your answers should have been in what? Radian. Radian. Because it's theta 2 pi to 2 pi. Tangent, we also know, is sine theta over cosine theta. Okay? So you're trying to figure out where am I going to get 0 from dividing my sine value, which is what? X or Y? Y. By my cosine value, which is x. Now, it's not going to be any of those that are in between. It's not going to be a, a pi over 3 or a 5 pi over 6 because that's 1 half and root 3 over 2 and square root 2 over 2. There's no way you can get 0. You're going to be looking at your quadrantal angles, okay? The ones that lie on the axis. So, you're looking specifically for the pair where sine is what value? Zero and cosine is one, not the other way around. Because if that was the case, you would have undefined instead of zero. So where on your unit circle do you have this type of combination? Or negative? Yes. You have it at careful. I gotta be a radian. So 2 pi, as well as pi, negative 2 pi, and negative pi, 
And zero. Zero is the degree and it's also be a radius. So you have zero pi radius. So you would need all five of those. Either one will be acceptable. Okay. Either or. That would be acceptable. All right. Real quick, uh, we're running out of time. We're going to skip this one and this one. Which one I want to use? All right. This one in your notes, okay? Go ahead and put this one in your notes. Solve this equation. You have sine 2x equals the square root of 2 over 2. And you're going to between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, this one's a little bit different because there's an, a 2 that's attached to the x, okay? However, you can still tackle it the same way, okay? You can still tackle it the same way. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pretend like that 2 is not even there. I'm just going to treat it as a regular sine x equals the square root of 2 over 2. Okay? So, I'm just going to, just for right now, I'm just going to treat it like that 2x is not even there. Okay? So, I'm going to try to figure out, all right, where on my unit circle is sine the square root of 2 over 2? Where am I in a circle is sine square root of 2 over 2. All right, so you have 45 and is that 135? Is that, is that all of them? Yes, because you're finding in between 0 and 360. On top of that, they're degrees, OK? Now, I can't say that this is my answer. Because remember, before it was a 2x, right? right? So basically, that x is just a 2x. Okay? So you would end up dividing by 2 to find out that the answer for x in this problem is not 45 degrees, but. 22.5 degrees and 67.5. Okay? And you can always check by plugging in. If I were to plug in 22.5 in for x, if I multiply that by 2, that becomes the sine of 45 degrees. Isn't this the y value of 45 degrees root 2 over 2? Same thing, if I plug in 67.5, uh, I multiply by 2, that's the sign of 135. Isn't the y value of 135 squared root 2 over 2? So just realize that if there's an additional uh, coefficient or something's being, say it's like, you know, 2 or 1 third or 3 halves, whatever, just know that you have one more additional step after you find your angle measures, okay? Or maybe 2, depending on the type of fraction. Okay? Let's look at this one. We're going to solve the equation 2 sine x squared plus 5 sine x minus 3 for 0 to 2 pi. Now this looks very similar to one of the types of function. What other type of function? A logarithm. Not a logarithm. A quadratic. Think about it. You have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. I just have signs now instead of x's. Okay? So to solve this problem, you can treat this just like a quadratic, except instead of wherever I'm putting an x, you're going to put a what? A sine x. So how does this factor? <clears throat>
And then using the same thing that you know about quadrats and solving quadrats, once you factor, what do you do from there? By doing what? Setting both factors equal to zero. And then you solve them separately. So once we set both factors equal to zero, we will basically solve these separately. So we'll have two sine x equals one, divide both sides by two. And now we're basically down to the point where we've done those other problems. Okay. We're asking ourselves, where are our unit circles? The sine equal one half. So where on my unit circle, because it is from zero to two pi, okay, in radians, is my y value one half. Okay? That's why again I've, I've been stressing, you know, you do need commits to memory because you won't have that unit circle there and it might take too long to try to recreate it. So it uh, sine is one half on your unit circle and pi over six, and if I pi over six. So those are your values for this particular x value. Over here, we'll do the same thing, we'll solve, okay? So we'll have x equals the sine inverse of negative three. And so we asked ourselves, where on our unit circle is the y value three? Just three, and if you think about it, there isn't a spot on our unit circle where sine or the y value is negative three. So this particular value for x is not gonna have any solutions. So the only solutions that work are x equals pi over six and x equals five pi over six. Okay? We're gonna look at another example just so you guys can get an idea. Okay? One of each of the uh, two different types. This one would've been a whiteboard problem and we're bounded between negative pi and positive pi. So for this one, remember, we're going to pretty much treat it like that 3x isn't even there, okay? So we basically got tangent of x equals 1. So we're going to try to figure out where on our unit circle is tangent 1, okay? So tangent, again, that's sine over cosine. So we're basically looking for the values where the x and y are basically going to cancel each other out. That only happens when sine is root 2 over 2 and when cosine is root 2 over 2. So that happens at pi over 4. And also, think about it is negative root 2 over 2 for sine and negative root 2 over 2 for cosine. That gives us a positive 1. So that happens in our third quadrant. At 5 pi over 4. Okay? And these aren't our solutions. Remember, this problem was a 3x, not just the regular x. So this is where we do that additional step. We're going to put a 3, and then we're going to end up dividing both sides by 3. So you'll have pi over 4 times 1 third. If you think about it, you change the lift. One of my solutions is going to be pi over 12. And over here, we'll have 5 pi over 4 times 1 third. So 5 pi over 12 is our other solution. Okay? Let's look at this. Let's look at this one. All right, so for this problem, it's, there's going to be a little bit, there's a lot going to be involved. So just so I don't get confused, so I can see myself getting confused, I'm just going to sub in a different variable for that x over 3. So that way I can look at it in a more simplified form, okay? Now, to solve this problem, I'm going to divide both sides by cosine squared u. And the reason why I want to do that is because we recall sine over cosine is tangent. So if I divide a sine squared u by a cosine squared u, I'm going to get a tangent squared u, which equals 3. And if you recall, the square can be either in between the, uh, the trig function and the variable or on the outside. And by doing that, we can take the square root of both sides to get plus or minus the square root of 3. 
and then we'll go ahead and apply the inverse of tangent and figure out where on our unit circle, a, actually not our full unit circle, but between negative 180 degrees and positive 180 degrees is tangent the square root of 3, positive or negative, okay? And so we think of, to, about that in our, uh, about our unit circle, that means that sine would have to be, so the y value would have to be the square root of 3 over 2, and cosine would have to be 1 half, so that way they would cancel out by doing keep change flip once you divide it, okay? And I'm looking for a positive and a negative square root of 3, so honestly, I'm looking for all of the values, but still again, between negative 180 and positive 180. So if I think of my unit circle, that occurs at, so that happens at 60 degrees, that happens at 120 degrees, that also happens, think about it, we got to go the negative direction at negative 60 degrees and negative 120 degrees. But remember, u was originally x over 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase this. It's the same thing as basically that, you know, imagining that, you know, that the 3 isn't there or something, you know, like the other problems. So we're going to put x over 3 back in. And then what I'm going to end up doing is to get x by itself, I'm going to multiply 3 to each side. And so I'll end up getting x to equal 180, negative 180. Over here, I'm going to end up getting 360 and negative 360. But the only thing is, I'm bounded in between these two values. So my positive 360 and my negative 360 are not even a part of my solution set. It's just the positive 180 degrees and the negative 180 degrees. Okay? Now it gets easier again once you get the practice with your trig functions, guys. And so uh, for my folks who might not have had experience with this just yet, don't worry. It will get easier the more you practice, okay? So your, work, your homework tonight is the worksheet with a lot of practice problems. Please go ahead and start studying the unit circle so that way you can be more fluid in recognizing where, you know, um, these different sine and cosine and tangent values are because um, it'll make it a lot easier when you're doing uh, more advanced problems. Okay, guys?